All right, this is Third John. This is the intro. And originally I was going to save Third John for another day, but I got through Second John pretty quickly. Yeah, so it's the same days. It's the same day for all of them. All right, so I just figured why not since I got through those other two quickly. All right. So, the intro of 3rd John. The epistle's title is 3rd John. It is the third in a series of three epistles that bear the Apostle John's name. 3rd and 2nd John present the closest approximation in the New Testament to the conventional letter form of the contemporary Greco-Roman world since they were addressed from an individual two individuals and they're the shortest epistles containing less than 300 Greek words and they're able to fit on one papyrus sheet some of this is the same stuff in the second John intro so the shortest epistles in the New Testament and of course the author and the date so some of this is the same as the first of the second John intro the author is John he's described as the elder which means he's advanced which is the advanced age of the apostle his authority is eyewitness status especially during the fundamental period the fundamental and fundamental period of Christianity where John was involved with Jesus's ministry and we don't know the precise date of this and it's probably close to the same time that John wrote second John and probably and around in John second John was probably written around the same time as first John so which would be in the years 90 through 95 AD so probably all three in that same time frame whenever he had his ministry at Ephesus in the latter part of his life all right now here's some different details regarding the background yeah so not the same background as second John all right so background and setting third John is actually perhaps the most personal of the three epistles while first John appears to be a general letter addressed to congregations scattered throughout Asia Minor, modern-day Turkey, and 2 John was sent to a lady and her family. 3 John, the apostle, actually clearly names the sole recipient of this letter as the beloved Gaius or Gaius. This would make the epistle one of the few letters in the New Testament addressed to such an individual like uh, Philemon that, yeah for example that Paul wrote or Titus yeah the name uh, Gaius Gaius I'll just say Gaius was a very com- was a very common name in the first century but nothing is known of this individual be- beyond John's salutation yeah from which It is inferred that he was a member of one of the churches under John's spiritual oversight. And as with 2 John, 3 John focuses on the basic issue of hospitality, but from a different perspective. While 2 John warns against showing hospitality to false teachers, 3 John condemns the lack of hospitality shown to faithful ministers of the word. Reports come back to the apostle that itinerant preachers known and approved by him had traveled to a certain congregation where they were refused hospitality like lodging and and provision. They were refused such hospitality by this guy named Diotrephes who domineered the assembly. Diotrephes went even further for for he... He also verbally slandered the Apostle John with malicious accusations and excluded everyone from the assembly who dared challenge him. 
But in contrast, Gaius, a beloved friend of the apostle and faithful adherent to the truth, extended the correct standard of Christian hospitality to itinerant ministers. So John wrote to commend the type of hospitality exhibited by Gaius to the worthy representatives of the gospel and to condemn the high-handed actions of Diotrephes. And this, and the apostle also pro, uh, promised to correct the situation personally, and he sent this letter through an individual named Demetrius, whom he commended for his good testimony among believers, yeah, among the brethren. So some historical and theological themes. So the theme of of Third John is the uh, commendation of the proper standards of Christian hospitality and the condemnation for the failure to follow those standards. And Second John lays out that you can you have to have truth when it comes to Christian hospitality, but here. John is commending Gaius for obeying what the guidelines are for Christian hospitality of receiving the people who actually walk in the truth. But he's condemning the guy that rejected showing hospitality to those who actually walked in the truth, the ones who preach the truth, this Diotrephes guy. So, so Second John says don't show hospitality to pre uh, to false teachers but do show hospitality to true preachers and Gaius good job on that Diotrephes yeah you're sinning by refusing to do that basically all right interpretive challenges some think that Diotrephes may have been a heretical teacher or at least favored some of or Maybe he favored some of the false teachers that were condemned by John and Second John. However, the epistle gives no clear evidence to warrant such conclusion, especially since one might expect that John would have been would have mentioned probably Diotrephes's heretical views. It just mentions his bad behavior. And this epistle indicates that his problems centered around arrogance and disobedience, which is a problem for the orthodox as well as the heretic. All right, so the outline of Third John, the commendation regarding Christian hospitality, verses one through eight, the con the common the condemnation first is commendation. The praising the Christian hospitality shown by Gaius. Second, the condemnation regarding violating Christian hospitality 9 through 11, talking about Diotrephes. And then third, the conclusion regarding Christian hospitality verses 12 through 14. All right, well, that's the end of that intro. And now I'll get into the first and only chapter.